Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regular Mythicon video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We have a couple of pieces of video news, and the first of which are the launch dates and prices of the GTX 1650 and GTX 1660 graphics cards, which, as the name implies, will be the lower end entries into the GTX 16 series, following in the footsteps of the GTX 1660 Ti, which was an interesting card because it was a GPU that NVIDIA did not release a Founders Edition Model 4. And with the pricing of that particular GPU, it was around uh, 70 US dollars cheaper than the entry level RTX 2060s, which means that if you get one of the higher end uh, GTX 1660 Ti cards, you're actually very close in price to an entry level RTX 2060. But in regards to the 1650 and 1660, we are seeing the 1650 card launch on the 30th of April for 180 US dollars. And for 229 US dollars, you can purchase the 1660 graphics card, the non TI variant, of course, on the 15th of March of this very year. So not too long into the future, we're going to have a much more fleshed out a uh, set of graphics cards from NVIDIA, who at the very start, of course, launched the very high-end SKUs first, and now we're finally able to get Turing at uh, much cheaper prices. So what about the specs of these cards? Bear in mind that these are not confirmed yet. From the rumors, these GPUs are indeed using GDDR5 memory, and the graphics core of the 1660 is essentially a cut-down variant of the 1660 Ti, but the 1650 has its own core. So going quickly over the specifications then, the 1660 Vanilla is using the TU-116-300 compared to the TU-116-400 of the Ti, 1280 CUDA cores versus 1536 CUDA cores, but the Cox frequencies here are very similar, boosting up to 1785 MHz, and there are still rumors that we're going to see a 3GB variant of the card along with, of course, the 6GB uh, version. Memory clock speeds are obviously considerably lower despite the same bus width, but once again we are seeing rumours of a uh, GDDR5 version only. As for the 1650, it's cut down further still using a TU-117 GPU. We don't have any information at the moment of the uh, number of CUDA cores, uh, but in terms of the base clock, it's going to be around 1500 MHz, and the rumors peg the card at 128 bit memory bus. Once again, 4 gigabytes of memory makes sense here. A viewer has also sent me over an exclusive, and that is that Nvidia are apparently testing a rewards program with GeForce Experience. From what he said, essentially, you get points for completing certain tasks in games. And as for the rewards, they are pretty impressive up to and including RTX 2080 Ti graphics cards. At the moment, this is only available for very select numbers of participants. And clearly, NVIDIA's plan here is to basically keep people in their ecosystem. I know I've said this before, but it bears repeating. NVIDIA are certainly feeling the pressure of Intel entering the GPU market. And they certainly don't just have uh, in, uh, Intel to worry about with AMD obviously releasing uh, Navi in the not too distant future, it, uh, NVIDIA want to do all they can to make sure that people are incentivized to remain inside the green program. Clearly giving away prizes such as RTX 2080 Ti's as well as GeForce powered laptops is not cheap, but currently this program is available to a limited number of participants. It's going to be interesting if NVIDIA continues to adopt this program and offers it to the public at large if they will continue to provide such lavish gifts for users. After all, striking that balance and definitely incentivizing people to continue to participate, but also not bankrupting themselves in the process, is going to be critical to the program's success. Now we're going to move over to a couple of AMD stories, and the first of which is an update to a story I covered yesterday with Navi14. In yesterday's story, I mentioned that we were uncertain whether Navi 14 was going to be an APU or a, a discrete GPU. Now, this was after a device ID of Navi 14 had been discovered in the AMD Flash.exe. 
but there is actually an update to this and I've been contacted directly by the individual who found this string on Twitter. Nemez said, and I quote, that I'd like to add, this is Nemez from the screenshot, that Navi 10 was found with M25 P05 slash C and SST39 SF010 strings associated, which are SPI flash ROMs. Navi 14 has an SOC 15.SPI associated with it, which is further confirming it being an APU. So what this possibly means then is Rainier, uh, which my sources have told me is going to be released in the second half of this year, will indeed be based on a Navi type of GPU along with, of course, Zen 2 CPUs. And this does go hand in hand what, with what AMD themselves have said. They've essentially pointed out that there is that second space, of course, on the, on the die that we've all seen for AM4 Matisse, but that is only going to be used for CPU cores. For APUs, they're going to be remaining uh, in the same thought process that they've currently got, in other words, design them as an MCM type of chip. Now we're going to finish the video off with the 64 core 128 thread monstrosity from AMD, which of course is ROAM. It is the next generation of server chip from the company and is being targeted towards high performance computing. A user on Twitter by the name of Francois Piedenol, who is actually a former employee of uh, Intel, he has also a love of machine learning, uh, has actually discovered a new entry on Sifsoft Sandra for a string ID of a 64-core uh, 128-thread processor. Now, if you decode this string, you can see... But what's really interesting about this is that it is not the only entry that we've had, which is very similar. In fact, uh, back in uh, the 8th of January 2019, we have a very similar processor uh, in fact, the string is pretty much identical, including the clock speeds, 2.2 gigahertz with 1.4 gigahertz of base clock. And we also have another result, which was uh, in the uh, earlier part of this uh, February, which was 15th of February 2019. Once again, 2.2 gigahertz for the turbo frequencies, 1.4 gigahertz for the base clock. Now, if we use the decoder for AMD processors, Z equals QS, we have a qualification sample. S, of course, it stands for server. 1.140 equals the base frequency. 6 equals the revision number, which is revision 6. E2 is an early 64 core LP ROM uh, chip. V equals SP3, which of course is the socket. I, once again, represents the number of cores, 64. U equals the amount of cache, which equals uh, 64 times 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache, because obviously each Zen 2 core has 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. 256 megabytes total of level 3 cache. G5 equals Rome stepping. And 22 and 14, as we've already established, equals the boost frequency and the base frequency. There are a couple of very interesting things about this set of results. Firstly, that we have so many from a super micro board on exactly the same piece of silicon, or at least it looks like the same piece of silicon. This could mean multiple things. It could mean that they're not actually testing the CPU at this point. Maybe they're updating the BIOS. Maybe they're showing, let's say, uh, potential vendors, or maybe it's a marketing person who has this particular setup and they're showing it to prospective cl potential clients, excuse me. It could even be little things like them uh, screwing around with possibly little tweaks on the actual PCB itself. And so these tests may have absolutely nothing to do with the process itself. It could even be little BIOS tweaks for the boards. And what's really interesting about this is that with Zen, original range of processors, we actually saw a very similar clock speed for the launch CPUs as what we did for the engineering samples uh, with the same amount of time before release. Ultimately, we don't know what the final performance of these processes is going to be or whether we're going to see higher clock speeds for final production silicon. But I did want to bring these entries to your attention. With all of that said, thanks very much for all of the recent support and for watching today's video. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.